from TIG Studios, Birmingham. This is T-Bone's Afternoon Tea. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to the show. This is T-Bone logging in with another episode of Afternoon Tea. Coming up in the show today, I will be talking about Batman Arkham Knight and the problems with its release, future plans for a new show, World of Warships going into open beta, World of Tanks patch 9.9, Future channel plans and its direction, and of course, Tankfest as a special feature to this episode. So that's a lot of ground to cover, so without further ado, let's get started. So what's been happening since the last episode? Well, not a lot in my personal life, but in terms of gaming and other events it has been fairly busy. A couple of weeks ago, one of the AAA titles came out that I was considering buying on release. Batman Arkham Knight. I've really enjoyed the Arkham series of games and up to this point I was looking forward to the conclusion of the story leading from Arkham City. I did visit the Steam page and could see there were a lot of negative reviews. I waited for channels like Total Biscuit and Angry Joe to cover this. It became clear that the PC port had been outsourced and was poorly optimised and bugged for the PC platform. WB issued a statement on the Steam page, which is as follows. We want to apologise to those of you who are experiencing performance issues with Batman Arkham Knight on PC. We take these issues very seriously and have therefore decided to suspend future game sales of the PC version while we work to address these issues to satisfy our quality standards. We greatly value our customers and know that while there are a significant amount of players who are enjoying the game on PC, we want to do whatever we can to make the experience better for PC players overall. Thank you to those players who have already given Valuables feedback. We are continuously monitoring all threads posted in the official Batman Arkham Knight community and Steam forums, as well as any issue logged with our customer support. If you have purchased your copy of the game and you are not satisfied with your experience, then we ask for your patience while these issues are resolved. If desired, you can request a refund at Steam or the retail location where you purchase the game. The Batman Arkham fans have continually supported the franchise to its current height of success, and we want to thank you for your patience as we work to deliver an updated version of Batman Arkham Knight on PC so you can all enjoy the final chapter of the Batman Arkham series as it was meant to be played. In a statement, Rocksteady have this to say. Rocksteady is leading our team of developers and partners as we work on the PC performance issues that players have been encountering. The work is significant and while we are making good progress on improving performance, it will take some time to ensure that we get the right fixes in place. Below is the list of key areas that we are dedicating our resources to improving the experience for our loyal fans. Support for frame rate above 30 frames per second in the graphics settings menu. Fix for low resolution texture bug, improve overall performance and frame rate hitches, and more options to the graphics settings menu, improvements to hard drive streaming and hitches, address full screen rendering bug on gaming laptops, improvements to system memory and VRAM usage, Nvidia SLI bug fixes, enabling AMD Crossfire, Nvidia and AMD updated drivers. While we work on improving performance, we will also continue to make interim patches available to address issues for those still playing the game on PC. The first patch is being released now and the updates include Fixed a crash that was happening for some users when exiting the game Fixed a bug which disabled rain effects and ambient inclusion We are actively looking into fixing other bugs to improve this further Corrected an issue that was causing Steam to re-download a game when verifying the integrity of the game cache through the Steam client. Fixed the bug that caused the game to crash when turning off motion blur in the BM system settings INI. A future patch will enable this in the graphics settings menu. We would like to thank our fans for their patience and invaluable feedback. We will continue to monitor and listen for any additional issues. I'm pleased to see such a response from Warner Brothers and Rocksteady about the state of this title. In my opinion, removing it from sale was the right thing to do after such a disastrous launch. 
Mind you, considering the arm's length of issues with the game, you wonder why the PC version was launched in the first place. Perhaps Steam's refund policy being introduced helped influence this decision, but that is pure speculation. Here's the thing. I know that when it comes to releases like this, it is easy to get caught up in the hype, especially if it is a game that you've really enjoyed so far. It is easy to get excited about the game leading to a pre-order or a day one purchase regardless of reviews. Unfortunately, it is also easy to get your fingers burned by doing this and buying a game that crashes to desktop or is bugged. I know there will be console gamers out there laughing their socks off as there isn't anything wrong with Airport. Well, that's great for you guys, but as someone who is a PC gamer, I expect certain things from a port. I expect the control scheme to allow for alternative ways of playing the game if I don't have the necessary periphery to play. I expect the game to run at 60 frames per second at 1080p most of the time or potentially higher as it is a smoother, more responsive experience. Which when you consider the specs of my machine are several times more powerful than the current generation of consoles is a reasonable expectation. I expect the game not to crash every 5 minutes while I'm playing it or a massive disparity between cutscenes and the in-game engine. Even Arkham Origins which is running in the background still has bugs. The fast travel system doesn't work properly. It will hang for what seems like an eternity with the same looped cutscene. Before now, I've left my desk to make a cup of tea, allowed it to stand for two minutes, come back to my desk, been halfway through drinking it, and finally, the game loads. The last time I had to wait that long for a game to load was on a Spectrum Plus 2 with a tape drive in the 1980s. It actually works out quicker to glide or grapple your way across the city than use fast travel. My point is this, and I'm saying this to every developer and publisher out there. For goodness sake, please, please, please stop releasing games that aren't finished yet. If you are that concerned about your customers, then stop releasing games in a poor state. I'd rather have a game delayed by a few months to ensure everything is done on the port and that it is the best version for the platform it is being developed for. On a technical level, I would expect the best version to be available on PC considering the processing power with the PS4 coming in second and the Xbox One coming in third in terms of graphical fidelity and frame rate. Articles like this is just one of the reasons I'd love to do a new show. As I've said in a vlog before Afternoon Tea was launched, it is an expensive show to put together due to the way that I want to produce it. I have a DSLR camera and a Lavalier microphone as well as a green screen now. But I still need to invest in more sound deadening material, more lighting, an additional vocal processor, a compressor and a teleprompter. Add to that the license for the music I want to use and the cost of the virtual set and it would work out to be a pretty penny. However, it is a plan that, albeit shall for now, is one that I want to do in the foreseeable future. So, what's next? Ah yes, World of Warships has recently come out into open beta. So all of you itching to have a go at World War II naval combat can do so. I had my account wiped with all my progress gone, gold returned over to me, and still have the premium ships that I bought to gain access to close beta. On top of this, I had a special ship on my port as I'd played over 50 battles in the closed beta test and rose through the ranks to the point where I could play multiplayer. I'm not going to dwell on this too heavily in this episode as I'm considering doing a beginner's guide to World of Warships very soon. As for World of Tanks, patch 9.9 .9 is currently in the test service stage. In the first part of the test, the motion was being put through its paces but has been confirmed that it will not be introduced in patch 9.9 .9 to replace the VK4502B. I did have a similar experience to the Mighty Jingles when on the test server. The number of times I was team killed by players with a Russian tag, especially when testing out tier 10 artillery, I lost count and even ran out of report tickets on players doing this. There were even games where a third of your own team had been wiped out by team killing while the enemy team hadn't even fired a shot. 
This is one of the reasons why when it comes to playing on the test server, it can be a very demoralising experience. There are some new tanks being introduced as well. Heavy tank number 6, which is the Japanese Tiger, and the Kanonen Jagdpanzer, which looks like an E25 that's been training with Rocky for the past 6 months, ready to take on its rivals. And of course, not forgetting the Sparpanzer 1C, which replaces the Alfklaren's Panzer Panther. Add to that a new game mode, Steel Hunt, and there is a lot to get excited about in the upcoming patch. The one thing I am a little disappointed about was the planned penetration changes which are not going to be introduced. Amongst the whole raft of buffs and nerfs, the T29 and the T32 were going to receive a minor buff on the penetration of standard ammunition from 198mm to 205 In my opinion, this would have been a welcome change, especially for the T32 when you're facing tier 10 tanks. So that brings me on to probably what most people are waiting to see and hear about, which is Tankfest 2015. Yes folks, I was there, albeit briefly on the Sunday afternoon. I had an idea that it was going to take me a long time to get there, but I didn't bargain on four hours. I suppose it wasn't helped by the fact that I was in a hire car with a very large insurance excess, so you can imagine how carefully I was driving. Before I set out for Bovington, Wargaming released some tanks to celebrate Tankfest as they were the major sponsor this year. These were the KV-5, the B-2, and the extremely rare BTSV. Oh, Wargaming, you know how to empty my wallet faster than George Clooney can rob three casinos. Shut up and take my money. So, you've guessed it, I have all three tanks in my garage, which will be reviewed at some point as I go through the tiers. So, after a very long drive, I arrived around lunchtime and was first of all greeted by all the trade stands as well as the reenactments. So I'm going to feature some of these in the background while I talk to you about the future channel plans, ideas I've had for Tankfest 2016, as well as a little goal that I have set myself. Before I do, the one thing I will mention is the detail these guys go into creating these scenes is just absolutely amazing. There's even one that looks like it's been taken directly from Fury. So my plans for the channel are to steer it more towards strategy and simulation games for the foreseeable future. This will include games like World of Tanks, World of Warships and I may even look at War Thunder and World of Warplanes. I still want to play MOBAs and some Hearthstone and I'm itching to do some air traffic control and flight simulation. I may even jump into a Eurotruck or OMC2. Anything that comes under strategy and simulation will be featured here. I think for now this will give the channel some focus for the time being until I have the subscriber numbers to take the channel on as a full time proposition. At the moment it is a hobby that I do in between work and other pursuits in my personal life. I may not release a video all that often but when I do, especially with tutorial series and tank reviews, hours of work goes into producing a video at the standards that I want to produce the video at. As for Tankfest itself, in one word. Amazing. There is so much going on at the same time, I just about managed to capture some photographs of tanks that will be familiar to you, as well as unfortunately missing out on a few as well. And yes, yes, I did give the TOG a hug. I did get to meet Sir Havoc in person. He's a lovely guy and an advocate of this channel, which I am extremely grateful for. As for the Mighty Jingles and Rita, I did see them, but not to speak to. Jingles was trying to leave at the time I saw him, so I left him and hope to catch up with him next year. So, what about 2016? Well, my plan is to be there for both days, possibly with a volunteer film crew. I may get in touch with the museum as well to ask express permission to film. My goal by then will be to be part of a multi-channel network like TGN, and I would hope that I would become an EU contributor for Wargaming. Only time will tell whether this comes true, but this is my ambition. So on that note, it is practically time for me to end. I would like to thank you all for watching. I will leave you with some video that I shot from the main arena and leave the tanks to do the talking. I apologise for the quality of the audio, 
I'm still looking to invest in a field recorder and shotgun mic, but for now, enjoy the sight and sound of tanks that I did manage to film from Tankfest 2015. So, until next time, take care and enjoy your gaming. This is T-Bone logging off. This is one of those vehicles that we're quite keen to point out. It's not a tank. Uh, this is a mobile artillery piece, and it's called the M110 uh, artillery piece. And this particular one carries a whopping great 8-inch gun on the top, or um, in modern parlance, about 203 millimeter. It was designed in the 1950s. They designed it for the 8-inch gun and a 175mm gun. And uh, it's a way of taking artillery around the battlefield. It's a relatively small vehicle. They initially hoped it was going to be air portable. You could get this on one or two uh, the the muzzle tank. brakes. It catches gases as they leave the barrel behind the shell. And by capturing the gas, it helps lessen the recoil. And when you're looking at a gun this big, that's one hell of a lot of recoil that comes out for that barrel when it fires. If it did fire on maximum charge, um, sitting where we are now, it could quite happily bomb Bournemouth. About 30 kilometers uh, would be the range of the shell in this vehicle. One of the is powered again by a pump engine easel. Again, has torsion bar suspension, with a larger number of road wheels. But it has that same curved shape on the side of its hull to deflect the mine blast and that sort of thing. The gun's 120 millimeter. It's extremely powerful but takes a lot of loading. In fact, normally the tank would carry two loaders because you need it to have the ammunition be so exhausting that you either load one chap load of projectile, another load in the case, or some similar arrangement like that. Notice also how the commander is right at the back of the cupola. But then you 